This is a little bit weird because notice at the beginning we protonated the carbonyl and at the end we deprotonate the carbonyl. The protonation was just a temporary thing to make the molecule more electrophilic and then we do a deprotonation at the end. Start by protonating and then we end up by deprotonating because ultimately we want to reform the carbonyl. We ended up with a carboxylic acid here. Now one of the issues that we talked about in the other videos is that carboxylic acids actually have two different forms, protonated and deprotonated. Well, we're under acidic conditions, so should we have the protonated or the deprotonated form here? Yeah, the protonated. Right. Is that what we have? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the correct answer, but you have to watch out. Under different conditions, maybe we should draw the deprotonated form as the final product. If it was base catalyzed. Exactly. All right, so what's the name of this general type of reaction? Uh, hydrolysis. Yeah, to uh, Acid catalyzed hydrolysis. Very good. To be even more specific, it was an acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis. One other detail. Um, the previous reactions we went through were not reversible, but this reaction is reversible. So I used equilibrium arrows here. You can turn an ester into a carboxylic acid, but you can also turn a carboxylic acid into an ester by reversing this process. Uh, in all these cases, we, we've been introducing an OH group. What is the nucleophile we've been using to introduce the OH group? Water. Water. Notice it doesn't look like water anymore because it's deprotonated. But we know that the way to put this on is with water, it had an extra proton before it deprotonated. Let's draw the mechanism for this reaction. Here we have water and sodium hydroxide.
That's good. Let me interrupt you. There's a slightly better way to do that, but that, that's good thinking. Now, what's the name of this reaction? Uh, base catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester. Yeah. We just did acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis, and now we're doing base catalyzed ester hydrolysis or hydrolysis under basic conditions. This is a little bit tricky to some people. Now, normally we would use a base to deprotonate somebody. Um, but here, the most convenient thing is just to use this as a nucleophile to attack. W what if you tried to use this to deprotonate somebody? Well, you could use it to deprotonate the water. But if you use the base to deprotonate the water, you'll just get another hydroxide anyway. So why bother? So rather than using the hydroxide to deprotonate the water, which would just give us another hydroxide anyway, which um, we can just go ahead and use this as a nucleophile to attack over here. So um, under these base catalyzed conditions, we're, in a sense, we're really using the base more like a nucleophile, in a sense. So it goes ahead and it uh, attacks. Here's the step where people are most likely to get confused. Uh, they didn't get confused because you'd already identified the L group. So that was good. You simply reformed the carbonyl. Um, now, it's very good that you didn't kick off this. This is what we want to reform. Now, notice that in this case, we kicked off that the leaving group was a neutral oxygen, a neutral oxygen. Now, normally in the past, we haven't considered this to be a good leaving group. Normally, we don't like neutral oxygens because when they leave as leaving groups, they end up negative. Um, however, that, that's okay in this case because there's a driving force. I don't know if you remember, what's the driving force that allows us to kick off a not very good leaving group here? What's the driving force that allows us to kick off a poor leaving group here? Um, what does nature the, really like about what's happening here? The condition, the base condition that it's in. Right. Okay, that wasn't quite what I was going for, although that's an important point too. The driving force here is reforming the carbonyl. Correct. Remember, nature likes to reform the carbonyls, so we're allowed to kick off a leaving group that normally wouldn't be acceptable. Uh, because we're reforming the carbonyl, we can kick off this oxygen leaving group. But you were also pointing out another good point. Some people here might be tempted to try to protonate this oxygen before it left. But then that would make it positive, which is not consistent with our conditions. Under basic conditions, everybody has to be neutral or negative. So we can't protonate this before it leaves, because then it would end up positive. Uh, and that's not consistent with our conditions. So we have to have it let just leave. And it's okay for things to be negative under basic conditions. That is consistent with our conditions. Okay, and, and then we have one more step. Now at this point, you protonated this, I think, from the water. That's correct. All right, well, that's a perfectly reasonable thing um, to do here. In, in that case, what would your final products be? Um, it would be uh, uh, ethanol and a carboxylic acid, but you could also, I guess, have the carboxylate and an alcohol. That's right. Now, what is the correct uh, final product here, the protonated or the deprotonated form? Do you want, do you want, um, what is, how do you decide, do you, uh, are they equal in, in, which one's Who's the they? major product? The carboxylic acid or the, uh, what is that, oxalate? Yeah, al uh, this is an uh, alkyl oxide. Yeah, well, let's focus on this for a second. Do we expect here to end up with a protonated carboxylic acid or a deprotonated? A deprotonated. Because we're under basic conditions. Under basic conditions, this has to end up deprotonated. So we need to find a good candidate to deprotonate it. Uh, well, this is the best candidate around to deprotonate it. So it's the best thing to do here. is to show the alcohol deprotonating. That's the simplest and best thing. All right. Then there might be some deprotonated forms of the alcohol in, in solution as well. But uh, th this is a good uh, way to write the final. This is the conventional way to write the final products here. The, the key point here is who would rather have a negative charge? Would this oxygen rather have the negative charge, or would the carboxylate oxygen? Uh, carboxylate because of uh, its stable right. right. So in a tug of war between these two, this is the one that wants the, the negative charge, and this is the one that wants the proton. That's the best way to think about it. So these are the best final products. You correctly said this was ethanol. And now we would call this acetate. acetate. Not acetic acid, because it's deprotonated. Instead, we would call it acetate. Uh, the IUPAC name would be ethanoate, but uh, the common name here is acetate. In fact, we still have the counter ion, so we could call it sodium acetate.
it's actually pretty conventional here to show the counter ion next to the charge. So then we would end up with sodium acetate. We actually talked a little bit about these namings for carboxylate salts last time. That's something your instructor has talked about. So this would be sodium acetate. Okay. In some ways, the base catalyzed version is, I, I think, simpler. Uh, but we need to know, we just use the base of the nucleophile. Notice that we, it makes sense to use a base that's very similar to the water, so we don't need to worry about them competing. So it doesn't matter whether this attacks or it deprotonates the water and then the water attacks, because you'd end up with a hydroxide either way. And then we know that under basic conditions, carboxylic acids don't stay as acids, they turn into carboxylates. And this is the best way to show that. 